Good morning, folks. We're starting in space. That's Mercury coming in to conjoin the Sun and the SOHO satellite tonight, heralding the start of significant geocentric geometries. Speaking of the Sun, perhaps you've noticed it's been more active. After having just one measly M1 flare over a week's time, we've jumped up to seeing them every few hours. This makes eight in less than four days. While sunspots pepper the disk, it's the central grouping that has taken the focus, releasing at least five of the flares and perhaps sharing in the making of two more. It has flashed and surged, but failed to produce any ejecta. We hope to take a deeper look at these solar flares on the website this weekend. The lone potential for Earth-directed ejecta, qualified because it's flying off the sides and back of our star every day, is this little filament snap just left of the flaring region. If the flares continue, the rise in high-energy protons may continue as well. One surge upward will give Earth a polar radiation storm. The threshold for those is at the dotted line. Looking at those sunspots, the far right groups are gaining complexity but they're departing the disk and will be gone soon. The big grouping giving us those flares is seeing growth at the trailing umbras and a split of the positive lead. Got a little delta developing right there as well. Incoming on the north, we don't actually see any delta spots but we do have mixing potential in three different areas of this massive group. Solar Wind Last 24 hours shows a slight uptick in telemetry starting late yesterday. The increased pressure has sent the electrons back to the floor, put more energy into Earth's systems, and produced minor instability in Earth's shield that has now faded back. While we didn't have any large earthquakes in the last 24 hours, the unusual locations continued rumbling, including Saudi Arabia. That may be more rare than England's quake. The aftershocks from the near six-pointer in Cali two days ago continue to ring out with general swarming across multiple states. Linked for you below is Hubble's latest. They say this tannish, whitish curve coming out away from the galaxy is a string of stars pulled from a galactic close encounter long ago. Can my EU-minded friends fancy another guess? No speculation at our top Earth news link today. 2011 on the left, 2014 on the right. Brown is abandoned agricultural zones due to poor performance, mostly due to lack of rain. Drought continues despite some rain that we will see in a moment. These two systems in the Indian Ocean were forecast to fade very quickly, and while the first one did, the second is sticking around longer than expected. Still strong, too, perhaps kept alive in Uyen fashion by the continued solar flaring. In the United States, that winter storm from yesterday's second video has shifted well north, but it's still able to pull its frigid air way down along the western edge of the low and the convergence. That big rain mass from the last two days is sticking to the southwest as well. In Europe, that power low lost no force, but indeed expanded its reach as the convergence crests further and further onshore. I'm fairly certain it would be easier to mention the parts of Europe that don't have a reason to monitor the weather today. Down under, I only want to note a strengthening of that low between Australia and New Zealand, and also how it connects with a low to the north of it. We see these types of connections between low pressure systems often in the US and Canada. Keep alert. Got the current conditions, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5 a.m. Eastern Time, 2 a.m. in the West, because apparently sleep isn't cool anymore. Might rethink that one. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.